I'm Jimmy Demetro. I'm in New York City with my Hellenic Film Society colleague, uh, Mary Miles. And together we have the pleasure of speaking with Mimi Denisi, who is in Athens. Uh, Ms. Denisi is uh, very much in the public eye these days. Uh, she has co-adapted her very successful stage plays, Zmirna, My Beloved, into a film, which she also stars in. The movie is attracting audiences around the world and has become a bona fide international success. Uh, actually, Ms. Denisi has for many years been a luminous presence in the cultural scene of Greece. Uh, she has written, I believe it's six historical dramas. She has translated and produced over 50 plays. Uh, she has starred in 10 films, more than 25 uh, television series. Uh, she has established a drama school in Greece. She's fluent in four languages, Greek, English, uh, Italian, and German, and has received the Legion of Honor from France and named Dame Chevalier. I don't know, Ms. Denise, is that all? <laughs> I don't know how, uh, when I <laughs> listen to somebody um, reading my CV, I think that Somebody else has done all this work. Well, it's very impressive, and you've done you've done it all. Uh, I come from a family where everybody was working hard, and I think it's in my genes. Without yeah. much effort, I I do anyway. Art is not the work for me. If I do a publicity shot or something, this is work. But if I'm writing a play or if I'm Acting in a play or in a movie for me, it's not work. It's my my passion, my love, and especially when it has to do with our country. Well, that's that's uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, Smyrna, my beloved. Uh, mm -hmm. And not only does it represent, uh, technically speaking, an advance for Greek cinema, but uh, it is a very important film uh, simply because it brings to the to the forefront, uh, a, a rather tragic historical event that is largely neglected or forgotten uh, uh, by the rest of the world. And of course, I'm referring to the destruction of the city of Smyrna and the annihilation of the Greek and Armenian and Jewish population of that, uh, of that cosmopolitan city. Uh, I, I, I know that, that the historical uh, side of all of this is very important to you. Um, how, how did the, can you talk a little bit about why, why this appealed to you? Uh, and I, I know you've devoted a substantial part of your life to this project. And because yeah. It started as a, yeah, it started as a play, uh, which was very successful. I believe it ran three seasons in Greece, over a million tickets sold, uh, pretty much unheard of in Greece. And yes. uh, tell us a little bit about the, the interest in Zmirna and, and why, why this particular story? Why did uh, it First of all, a lot of, of people at the beginning thought that I come from Zmirna, but uh, really my family has nothing to do with Asia Minor. Uh, even so, I believe that this uh, tragic page of our history is one of the most uh, traumatic and um, it's, you know, it's a tragedy without catharsis. These people were never really um, justified or belonged to our official history. We always omit this page one way or the other. We, we describe it in uh, half a page because this was not a tragedy that happened only because of the Turkish nationalism. It happened because of uh, the interests of Europe that changed from time to time and their indifference at the end towards Greece and because of the mistakes that the Greek governments made. So because we always, because we always um, like to concentrate on triumphs, I think we want to, to avoid thinking about the mistakes and about the catastrophes of the past. For me, it, was, it has always been the most important page of our history, at least in the 20th century. 
And uh, this genocide of the Pontians, Assyrians, Armenians, Greeks was the, um, an influence and inspiration to the Germans for the Holocaust yeah. that happened afterwards. And that brings us to your next, the sequel to this, right? Uh, which you've started working. I don't know how much you want to share with us, but it's from Salonika, uh, from Smyrna to Salonika. From Smyrna to Salonika um, has already been a play. I played it for uh, about eight months um, in the same theater in Athens, and then COVID happened. So we had to stop, even though it was totally sold out, it was a um, success as Mirna, because the second part has other things that are interesting. It has the refugees. I chose Salonika because Salonika at the time was a more cosmopolitan city than Athens. Athens had its population with the natives, and then the refugees went there. But Salonika had a thriving Jewish community, the most important Jewish community in Europe. And this is why it was called Madre Israel. Um, it had the natives and then the refugees arrived there. So they all uh, were the one against to the other because in 1917, there'd been a great fire in the city. And a lot, of, a lot of people lost their houses, their jobs. So when the refugees arrived, everyone was right from his side. I mean, the Jews said, we lost our houses. We are here 500 years. We need to take our houses first. The refugees said, yes, but we were defeated and we lost because of Greece. Uh, the natives said, we are the natives. So. Salonika at the time is a very interesting uh, city to, to write about. And so the, the second part, which I want to make into a series now for television, because it has many plots and subplots, sub it's the continuation of Smyrna. It's the same family, my family, but you also have the Jewish community, the Pontians, and the people from Salonika. And you see, just like in Smyrna, the, the story starts with the Jewish community having a wonderful life with culture, with um, in a cosmopolitan city. And as it goes on, uh, the fascism starts and you see them ready, you know, to, to go for extermination. And the refugees make a new life. So it's the, the opposite of Smyrna. The refugees starting with a very poor life, almost with no hope, and they survive. And the Jews start as we did in Smyrna with a beautiful life that goes. So what it says is that it's not just Smyrna, it's any society can be destroyed um, if, we, we have no idea what happened in the past. If we hide the past, then it will be repeated over and over again. Yeah. And, and I think uh, when you're talking about this universal human experience, when you're living and, and thriving in a particular place, uh, you don't always see the dangers that, that are lurking. You, you, it's your home. You can't think ill of where you are. Exactly. And and, and so this adds to the, uh, to the problem, clearly. I think one of the strengths of your film, uh, Ms. Denisi, is the fact that not only does it present a very, very even-handed account of, of the situation, but uh, a real strength for me was that you're able to, to present a compact yet very accurate picture of the historical situation. Uh, of, of the time. And I think that that is a considerable strength of, of the film. Um, it, it's, a, it's a job very well done. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy you say this because um, the, the creator of a, of a movie, of a script, has to decide either he will stick to the, to the reality of historical events or he will say, I'm an artist and I follow my imagination, my fantasy, etc. But when it concerns such a serious historical event, 
that is between not only between two countries, Greece and and Turkey, but also between these two countries and Europe, I think you have to be very careful and accurate. Yeah, it, it's it's the the challenge for the artist is to find the balance. Clearly, you you can't stage history. Uh, you exactly. have to alter a little bit, but you have to honor what you the subject matter you're talking yeah, about. Exactly, and not corrupt it, and then you you do that perfectly perfectly well uh, in in the in the film. Uh, you've been you've been quoted as saying that Greece must reclaim or claim its history rather than request it. And you said it much more elegantly in Greek. Um, is this your attempt or your effort, because you, you've done this for many years, of claiming Greek history and solidifying it for us and for the years to come? Well, I'll tell you, I think that sometimes we are unfair to politicians. Politicians have to keep a balance uh, when we have difficult issues with our neighbors, etc. But artists um, must have this freedom and artists must offer something to society and to their country apart from themselves. I mean, after so many years, I mean, the theater and so much success that the public uh, gave to me, um, for me, I have no reason to, to do another play or another movie about the woman that falls in love, does this, da, 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 da. Uh, I have to do something that will be useful for my country as well. And uh, I understand that Smyrna or similar issues are difficult for politicians. Even now we have attacks from, from Turkey. So they cannot be free all the time to, to speak about it. But when you use your history as an artist, um, indirectly, you say the things and uh, it's, it's political also. It's, it's a diplomacy. It's a kind of uh, political diplomacy through art. Right. And I think we have such a wonderful story if the people in Hollywood knew all of the, 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 the stories we have in Greek history, they would have made about 200 movies. They don't know it. We well, let's, let's, hope. <laughs> let's hope they'll find out as we go on. Smyrna was such a huge success. The theatrical release showed in over 700 screens. And I believe you were the fourth highest grossing film in the US that week, which is amazing. Amazing. And there's yes. no question that it'll find a home in streaming because a far broader audience needs to see this. So congratulations. It was extraordinary. And we can't wait for the sequel, to be honest, because that will really um, take the story to a different place. I, I must tell you, Ms. Denisi, uh, even though the film has now been shown in the United States, we get uh, numerous requests every week at the Hellenic Film Society offices to try to bring the film back again, try to show it. We do monthly screenings at the Museum of the Moving Image in New York, and, and uh, uh, we're, we're asked time and again to try to bring the film back. So people, there are people who still want to see it, and uh, uh, I, I hope, obviously, streaming would be the perfect, uh, the perfect venue for... Uh, for uh, I'm, I'm so happy you, you are telling me this, and oh, this it's, interview gives me the chance to say thank you. I'm very grateful for your help. You helped us enormously. And I'm very grateful to a lot of, uh, of people in New York and other states that really helped us very much with their presence and with uh, you know, texting to their friends, etc. It went very well. And I think that it, it still has a big public to reach in the United oh, absolutely. States. absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we, I'm sure people all over the country understand the passion that you put into this project and the sacrifices you've made over the years to get it done. Uh, and, uh, and it is so important for us that this be seen and, and the history be learned uh, that uh, uh, how can we not do all we can uh, to, to help? Uh, the film is worthy of any attention it can be given. And that's really what, what matters. If the product isn't good, uh, no matter what, what anybody does, it's not going to 
It's not good. It can't yeah, exactly. The story, quality, the story is not enough. Exactly. It's a quality film and, and people respond to it wonderfully. Uh, we showed it, we were the first to show it in New York. That was before the Metropolitan yes, Museum. I remember. Art people were sobbing in, uh, when they came out of the theater. They were so moved, so emotionally touched by the film. People would come up to me and say, uh, oh, you know, my grandmother was from Smyrna. I, I have relatives from Smyrna. The, 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 the film hit a personal, uh, a, a personal touch in its viewers. And, uh, and you don't have to be from that area or you don't even have to be Greek to feel it. It's a human story. Uh, and yeah, and exactly. this, is, uh, this is why it's so poignant and so, so wonderful to see. But to I was experience. amazed to hear that a lot of people in the States, uh, their, their origins, their families came from yes. Smyrna or Asia I, I, Minor. Exactly the same. I have the same feeling. Uh, uh, I didn't realize just how many, I'm talking about hundreds of people uh, yeah, who yeah. come up to us and say, oh yes, I'm from, I have roots in Smyrna and things like that. So it's, uh, it, it's very, 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 very touching. And but you know, I, I it's always It's meaningful say, to everyone, no matter where you come from, it's, it's meaningful. Of course, and, and I'm always saying that one of the first uh, people who influenced me was Olympia Dukakis, I always say this because I don't know how many people know that our great Olympia came from that area. Yeah. Uh, from a, a small town at Ramiti near Smyrna. And she so much insisted that I write about it. It was, you know, it was always in her heart. She, she had pain for that. She wanted a film to be made and I was very happy that her son was there at the Metropolitan and also, you know, it. I imagine Horton's, the, the American consul's um, grandson was there because to tell you the truth, only the Americans helped them at the end. The yeah. Europeans did not help. Right. And the Americans helped also financially afterwards because without them, the um, Near East Relief and the Red Cross, etc., that came from America, uh, Greece could not feed and, uh, and do anything for the refugees. It was too small and too poor at the time. I, I like that you mentioned Olympia Dukakis. Uh, she's, we considered her a national treasure, the, the, the true epitome of the working artist, the working actress, and uh, wonderful. Uh, I must tell you a story. Uh, just a few months before she died, uh, she came uh, to do a public appearance at the Museum of the Moving Image for the Hellenic Film Society. And she was very frail and very weak. And I said to myself, how is this woman going to be able to, to sit on the stage and answer questions for half an hour? Uh, I didn't think she, she had it in her. Well, the, the minute she did come on stage, she got a standing ovation, of course. And all of a sudden, her, she changed. She was a young girl again. And, and the, uh, the, the, her response to the adoration was so touching and so moving. She became, she became the, the young Olympia that we all knew and, and adored. Uh, I remember her uh, from that day. And she's a, it's a very poignant memory for me. Uh, but uh, it's a nice one to remember. It, it, this, is, this is the nature of a true artist. Yeah. Yeah. And Olympia was a true artist. It, it, for me, a real artist may be, and it happens to all of us, you may be sick at home, you may be tired, or uh, I remember the day my dad, my father died, and I had to go to the theater in the afternoon, and I said, how I'm going to play. But it's something very strange that happens uh, to the artist. When he goes on stage and he sees the audience and their expectance and their adoration, something happens inside you and you get the strength to, yeah. to, to be well and to do the best you can. Yeah. yeah. And she Olympia was a fighter. Olympia was a fighter, really. Up to, to her last moments, because I, I had come to New York at the time, she insisted, she said, no, no, I'll be fine. I'll be in the movie. This is a movie for my grandparents. And I didn't say- I, Did, I did, did you want to cast her? Was that one of the, did you want to cast her in the film? Was that one of the-, uh, the Yes, the, yes, the, in, in the reality, first... 
uh-huh. in reality I, I changed it afterwards yeah. because the beginning and the end was written about Olympia starting in Manhattan, etc. So I wanted the movie to be around her for her to be the narrator. I see. I see. Yes, I see. but then we lost her just Life a few in the way, right? Right. right. Before the the movie. Well, you as a person and your career is clearly an example for all creative people, especially women mm-hmm. in Greece and throughout the world, because you have an international career. Who were your influences? Who were your mentors? And how did you go from this academically inclined child to having this passion for art that that's what you needed to do? How did you have that moment? To tell you the truth, I, I always had this artistic inclination, but I was also the daughter of a general. My father was a general and chief of the army. So for him, because I was a very good student, I finished an American school, Pierce, Pierce College in Athens, and then went to the uh, University of Athens studying Byzantine and modern uh, history. And for him, that was such a strict general, it was uh, impossible for me to become an artist. I wouldn't dare telling him this. So I I started by doing what was um, in my heart at the second position, which was history, literature, etc. I started studying this and I was very lucky because uh, one of our great directors, two times uh, nominated for Oscar, Vasilis Georgiadis, that has done, um, I don't know what, what went to the Oscars, to, to Homo Vafti Ke Kokino. Um, yeah, I, don't, I forget the, the American title, but you're... Yes, yes I, I, I don't know the American title. Anyway, he chose me for the leading part in Jungerman, that was a novel by Karagatsis, very famous one with a very famous leading actor, Alekos Alexandrakis. So from one day to the other, I became an actress without being in drama school yet. Very, I became very popular. And I said to myself, I give one year to see how I will do, if the audience will like them, and then I go to the drama school. So next year I went to the drama school, but I never, I never expected to have such a great and long uh, career, especially in the theater. I thought this would be impossible, but okay, after that, I started translating from the beginning, then I started directing. So all this became naturally part of my my life. But, uh, you know, when you have a um, theoretical basis, it's always there and it's always useful. And I say this to all the young people who want to become actors or artists in general, that to have a general culture, to go to the university, to have some uh, knowledge, this is basic. Exactly. You the more you bring, on the, the mm-hmm. more you bring to your to your profession. Yeah, <laughs> of course. The better you'll be. A lot, of, a lot of kids, you know, they just see the result. They see the cover on the magazine. They see the photo with a nice dress at the premiere. They don't know that behind that is six months or a year of work, uh, not glamorous, not well-dressed, not going out. You have to be alone to work on that. You cannot write a play or a script going to a bar at night. You have to stay at home alone and do research and write. You're, you have been involved in so many aspects of the theater and film career. Do you prefer one over the other or is it just one <laughs> the same for you? Do, do you enjoy the writing more, the directing, the acting, the producing, or do you just feel compelled to do it all? Uh, I'll tell you, the producing, I definitely don't prefer it. Producing is difficult. You have to to search for money all the time. I you know that's to... the worst. For us to raising money is the worst yeah, part of, yeah. of raising the Raising money for me is very difficult. And it's very difficult when you participate in something, you cannot speak about yourself. Um, 
it was easier with Smyrna or with such national subjects because then you really feel I'm not asking for money for myself to do something that is flattering for me. I ask money for my country, for a national issue. So this is easier. Um, it's very different writing, directing, acting. Uh, of course, my, my, my great love is acting because acting gave me the chance to do the rest. If I hadn't become popular and loved by the audiences, I wouldn't be able to do the rest. Uh, so acting is um, a great love of mine. And I think that movies and theater are so different. I mean, it's very difficult for an actor. It has different kind of difficulties. It's difficult to, to, do, to make a movie because you have to be certain of what you're doing, totally concentrated, fully emotionally uh, being there present uh, at all times because this, you know, you, you won't have a chance to correct. This will stay there forever. So this is the great difficulty and that it has no continuity. You have to... So you're saying as an actress in the theater, you grow into the part, is that what you're... Yes, that... in the theater, you grow into the part. And uh, one night you feel you were not that good and the next day you are better. And the other day, maybe you are fantastic or terrible. Um, but for me, the theater is the basis for actors. And you see that all actors say this in America also. You see that actors that have been in the theater like De Niro or like Meryl Streep, they know what they're doing on their, on their own. They don't depend only on the director. Uh, actors that have never have never been trained for the theater, they go into the movies, they may become huge stars, but they depend on, on the director. If the director is good, they are great. If the director is bad, they are terrible. The ones that come from the theater are never terrible. They might be better in a movie and less in another, but you know, you are totally, um, alone on stage and you are very vulnerable. Anybody can shout at you. Anybody can leave the theater. So you have to be good to have a career. You cannot be a theater actor, actor if you're not good. You can be, be a movie star without being a very good actor. Very good point. Maybe maybe there's, there's hope for me then. <laughs> it, it never occurred to me. Never. <laughs> so we'll, 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 we'll scratch that. Uh, but, but I must add something that writing is a passion of mine because what, uh, what writing does, um, if you are an actress like me, popular you meet so many people and your life is very intense and meeting a lot of interesting people every day still this is something that makes you tired when you write you concentrate on one thing you are on your own and you have one topic not 30 things to do in the theater so this for me gives me um, how can I say, when I'm writing, I'm very happy and very, um, I'm not Focus, afraid of anything. Yeah, yeah, I see. In the uh, theater, I must tell you, you are afraid every night. Every night you go to the theater, you say, is my voice okay tonight? Am I fine? In, in ancient, uh, big ancient theaters, amphitheaters, when you go, every night you are terrified. You think you are in Colosseum with the, waiting for the lions because <laughs> all the audience is high up. You are down and you feel very small and you don't have, you don't know if you have, uh, uh, if your voice is strong enough, if you are physically okay. It's difficult. Okay. No matter how seasoned the performer, the fear never, never leaves you. Uh, that's interesting. In the uh, theater, no. <laughs> well, you, you're clearly a success story, but in the early days, I'm sure it wasn't easy to be taken seriously as a young and very attractive woman trying to pave her own way. How did you overcome the challenges, the stereotypes, and how do you sort of give back 
a friend of mine, Cynthia Lopez, who's the uh, CEO of New York Women in Film and Television, has a wonderful saying that when you have the opportunity to walk through a door, make sure to hold it open for the next person. So how, how was this for you at a very different time? I mean, we're living in a very different world. We're more aware. We seek diversity and equity. Dare I say, when you started, it wasn't as simple and clear cut. No, and it still isn't, I think. Uh, things are more in the open, but it's still difficult for women. Uh, and I think especially for young girls when they are a bit pretty, etc., it's even more difficult. People think that it's easier, but it's not. It is as a first impression because when you are pretty, okay, people look at you, but um, the, the dangers are always there. And uh, especially in the past, if a woman, if an actress was pretty, they didn't take her very seriously. They thought she just a pretty girl. So in my experience, what I had to do, I had to be very patient and I am patient by character. I said, time always shows. Uh, and you've got to, to have more and more knowledge um, and be better in what you're doing and be truthful, be, be frank. Uh, nobody can fight somebody that knows his profession very well. You know, I, I had my own theater from the beginning, from the second year I've been an actress. And you know how many difficulties I had with technicians because technicians and their syndicate was very tough and they were all men. And when I went to do Anna Karenina, for example, that was a huge production, not only for Greece, for anywhere. And I had 20 technicians, they said, what, we will listen to this girl. Uh, you know, they made fun of me, how I can manage to do it. But by being patient and showing that I know where the lights must be. I know how you must put the set. If you know, if you have knowledge, uh, the jokes stop and they understand that you are not uh, rivals uh, because you are of different gender and you don't give, um, you don't tell them you do that. If you are polite and patient and know what you're talking about, they will accept you. At least this is my experience. Not that I didn't have bad experiences with people, but I always knew how to to face them and have never been aggressive. Do, do women have to show that they know what they're doing more than men have to show, uh, do you think? Oh, you, you of do. course, yeah. of course, of course. They so, have to, to, to know double. They have to be very well prepared for everything they do. Uh, it's still like this. I don't know if you agree. I, I, I agree. And, and, you know, I, I'm not an actor, but uh, I'm an attorney. So I've been mistaken for the secretary many times. It's interesting. Uh, I, I, I somehow I thought in Greece, I, I noticed that there are, for example, many women film directors in Greece, many more proportionately than, uh, than there are in working in Hollywood. So I thought perhaps things were a little bit different in Greece. I thought that things really? were more open. Well. Uh, just using that as an example, there are quite a few noted women directors, whereas in, 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 in the United States, there are very few women uh, who are... Who yes, are, yes, uh, but, but, but how many... Yes, but how many of them have become really successful, famous, been able to live by this profession? Very yeah. few. Yeah, well, that, that might be the case. There are. What, what, the, the, what is the, the result? So you're saying it's not no, just it's getting not. the job, it's, it's being employed uh, consistently. Yeah. Uh, getting the job once or twice doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I see. You, you've got to have a, a career that goes on uh, for, for a long time. Uh, the Hellenic oh. Film Society obviously is interested in, in Greek films in particular. Uh, do you have any opinions on, on 
the future of Greek cinema, the direction it's taking, its strengths, its weaknesses. Um, is there anything you'd like to comment on as far as the Greek films are concerned? I will tell you. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we will be in a better, uh, a new period will start because up to a point, there is there was a big disagreement in Greek cinema. There were movies that were made very fast, not with good taste, um, concerning a very, let's say, uncultured kind of audience. And the other kind were films that nobody would understand, that they tried to make really difficult and let's say artistic, and many of them didn't have any meaning. Yeah, I, I mean, call that self-indulgent film, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I call it mm -hmm. self-indulgent filmmaking, uh, by the way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, not everybody is talented like uh, Agelopoulos or like Lanthimos and can make movies like that. So a lot of them were really empty, pretentious. And what did it do? The result was that the audiences didn't go to watch these movies. Other part of cultured audience didn't go to, to watch these easy, let's say, comedies. So there was no audience at the end. What is missing from the Greek movies, and this is what we try to do with Smyrna and a few other films, is the mainstream, good mainstream movies that like they exist in every country. And the same with plays. If you don't have a mainstream theater and cinema, you cannot have an experimental one. Yeah, exactly. You need to have this, and then you have others that make experiments. But the, 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 the heart of the cinema cannot be the experimental. Exactly. Right, commercial success is not a dirty word in art. Yeah, no. exactly. And and commercial does not have, com I, I don't use the, the word commercial, I say successful. Whatever is successful does not mean, does not have quality. On the contrary, for me, if something has quality, it is successful, even if it's difficult. Somehow people sense this. Uh, Agelopoulos movies, because I used more vulgaris, movies always had found their audience and had success because they were really good. Exactly. I, I don't believe in this theory. I did something good, but nobody understood it. Or I'm a good actor, but nobody recognizes it. People are not stupid. Yeah. They, they see and they feel. Right. So it's, you're doing something wrong. Right. It's not me, I never blame the, the audience. Uh, in my long career, two, three times that I did things that did not work were not good. Because of me, because of the director, doesn't matter. But there was something wrong with it. It was not the audience who changed from one season to the other. It was my mistake. Yeah, and certainly I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think the uh, the, the real job at hand for the Greek movie industry now is to regain its audience. Uh, that's very, very important. Uh, people, they have lost an audience along the way because of the kind of filmmaking you were describing before. Uh, hopefully, the, yes. there are a lot of new people, a lot of new talent. Hopefully, that uh, they will have an impact on, uh, on the quality of, uh, of the work coming out of Greece. I think we, so. We can hope so. We can and the, also, the appetite in the diaspora is huge for Greek film. Um, you know, Greek Americans, course. Australian Americans, uh, sorry, Australian Greeks. Uh, yes, they're, they're now constantly yes, seeking now out we'll play in, uh, in Australia, will be distributed in Australia. Yeah, I'm not surprised, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it'll do very well there as well. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I have, so. I have a final question for you. Jimmy may have many more. Um, for me, you're a trailblazer. You're a Renaissance woman. I don't think you, uh, you see boundaries, but you don't pay much attention to them. In one word, how would you describe yourself? 
Oh, that's a <laughs> tough one, Mary. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a tough one. Um, hey, let's I hear it. Uh, um, you said the right word. I don't see any boundaries. I don't uh, discriminate between countries or genders or, uh, and I'm not antagonistic at all. I love talented people. I love to see lovely women progressing and young men, etc. And I think that uh, if somebody has the this uh, um, divine chance or give given by God to us to, to, to have such a career, he should be grateful and offer to the country, to other people. And this is my, my motto to, to live and work with other people and give them the chance that somebody else gave to me much earlier. And to see, to see no boundaries, not to say, this is Greek, it's for Greece. This is for England. No, we are all human. I mean, we must, it's a time we must be over these this, uh, discriminations. I think this is a lovely way to end our conversation. Uh, Ms. Denisha, you are absolutely charming and beguiling. And uh, we're, so, uh, we're so happy that you gave us this opportunity uh, to speak with you and to share this conversation it was an honor. with many, many people uh, online who, uh, who uh, are intrigued by your presence and want to know more about you. Uh, I thank you very, very much. And I know Mary and I and millions of others wish you can continued success. Keep doing the wonderful, important work you're doing. And, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be here to, to enjoy it and to appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It was an honor for me. And I hope to be um, very soon to, to be back in New York. Oh, that would I be really one. love New York and you're the always, USA. And I hope to meet here. you both at that time. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And be well. Thank you.